Hello everyone, in this video we will be analyzing the Hyper Accelerated Dragon by looking at the latest lines. The Hyper Accelerated Dragon is a very complex opening. It's very sharp, very tactical, and theoretical. If you know the variations in this video, anytime white deviates and plays something different, you'll be in a position to take advantage against white. One of the things I like about the Hyper Accelerated Dragon is how it allows black to equalize with relative ease. Equalizing means that black has managed to neutralize white's opening advantage, meaning both sides have the same chances of winning. All the lines here for black are from Grandmaster Games or are checked with the latest Stockfish. Let's get started. e4, c5, knight f3, here, knight c6 is the accelerated dragon, but if you like to avoid having to play against the bishop b5 Sicilian, also known as the Rosalimo, then you can play the hyper accelerated dragon with g6. White will play d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight c6, knight c3, bishop g7. Now white has to defend the d4 knight. Bishop e3, knight f6, bishop c4, castle short. This is our chess tabia, the position after which the real game begins. Here the main line is bishop b3. We'll look at this move last. Before we look at bishop b3, we'll look at a number of different moves. You can see the moves we'll be looking at by looking at the arrows I have uh, drawn on the board. We'll start with castle short. So after castle short in this position, we're going to play knight takes e4. And here, white will have three different moves. Knight takes e4, knight takes c6, and bishop takes f7 check. We will look at this bishop takes f7 check move last. Let's look at knight takes e4 first. After knight takes e4, we're going to play d5. This is a common idea in the hyper-accelerated dragon. And here, white is going to play knight takes c6, b takes c6, bishop d3, d takes e4, bishop takes e4, bishop a6, attacking the rook. And here, queen takes d8 is going to be played if white plays Bishop takes c6. This is not going to be good for white because we can play rook c8. And then a game will continue. Bishop e4. Bishop takes f1. Queen takes f1. Bishop takes b2, attacking the rook. Rook b1. Bishop d4. And there's a complete advantage to black due to being up an exchange. So bishop takes c6 is no good, so white is going to play queen takes d8, rook f takes d8, rook f d1, bishop takes b2, again attacking the rook, rook takes d8 check, rook takes d8, rook b1, bishop b5. If white takes the bishop on b2, we can checkmate on d1. g3. Bishop d4, rook d1, e5, c3, bishop a4, attacking the rook, rook d2, bishop b6, defending our d8 rook, rook takes d8, bishop takes d8, bishop takes a7, bishop a5. The endgame is about even, or perhaps black has a slight edge. So that was a look at the knight takes e4 move. Instead of knight takes e4, let's look at knight takes c6. After knight takes c6, b takes c6, we're going to strengthen our center. Knight takes e4, d5, bishop d3. Position is about equal after black takes the knight.
So finally, we're going to look at uh, bishop takes f7 in this castle short line by white. So bishop takes f7 check. Since d5 is coming, black gives up the, his bishop for a pawn early on. So we're going to play rook takes f7, knight takes e4, bishop takes a d4, bishop takes d4, d5, knight g3, e5, bishop e3. Our strength is in the center, and it will be sufficient compensation for our position being slightly behind in development. Position is about equal. So we've looked at castle short by white. Next, let's look at f3. After f3, we're going to play queen b6. This is the move to remember in this position. The e3 bishop is not defended. And a take on e3 is going to result in a check in this position. So here, we're going to look at three moves. Uh, we're going to look at a3. We're going to look at knight f5, which is a big mistake. And we're going to look at bishop b3. That's going to be uh, the best move here, and, and that's the move we're going to look at last. So let's look at a3 first. Uh, it probably allows black a slight edge. Uh, after e6, now white's light squared bishop is biting on granite. Castle short. Knight takes e4. We're opening up the dark squared bishop to attack the d4 knight. And it's that knight is attacked a total of three times and defended twice. Here, uh, knight a4 is going to be played if white plays f takes e4. We can play bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, queen takes d4, knight takes d4. Black is up a pawn. White does not have adequate compensation for that pawn. So f takes d4 here is no good. Uh, knight a4, let's look at this move. After knight a4, we're going to play queen a5. Attacking the a4 knight. And here f takes e4 is going to be played. c3 is a mistake here. It seems to look okay, but it actually loses to knight takes d4. White is going to pick off one of the knights. And uh, we will uh, save the other one. Uh, for example, let's say f takes e4. Knight c6. Or if um, bishop, uh, bishop takes d4. Knight f6. In either case, we're going to have a completely winning advantage. So c3 is no good. f takes e4 and queen takes a4. We will have a slight advantage uh, due to the extra pawn. So that was a look at a3. And remember, after a3, we're going to play that e6 move. So um, that uh, light squared bishop that white has is going to be weakened. So instead of a3, white can try knight f5. I've had this move played against me a few times. All you have to remember here is queen takes b2, bishop d2, and here simply g takes f5, winning the knight. Complete advantage for black. So uh, let's look at the best reply, which is bishop b3. After bishop b3, uh, we can play knight takes e4 and uh, there's three moves we'll look at by white here f takes e4 knight f5 it's also a mistake to play this move here as well i'll show you why knight d5 and we'll look at this move last so let's start with f takes e4 uh, after ta f takes e4 bishop takes d4 knight d5 attacking our queen queen a5, bishop d2, queen d8, black is up a pawn and has a clear advantage. So that was a look at f takes e4. Let's look at knight f5. Uh, so after knight, knight f5, we can play knight takes c3, queen d2, queen a5, knight takes g7, knight b5, c3, if knight f5 here, we can play queen takes uh, d2 check, bishop takes d2, g takes 
f5. Black is up a lot of material and will win this game. So c3, and then uh, king takes g7. Black is up a minor piece and a pawn. Complete advantage to black here. Now we need to look at the move knight d5 in this position. So after 10 knight d5, we're going to play queen a5 check, c3, knight c5, knight takes c6, d takes c6, knight takes e7 check, king h8, knight takes c8, rook a takes c8, castle short, this is white's only move, all other moves uh, lose for white, rook cd8, queen c2, rook f e8, bishop f2, and queen b5. Position is equal, uh, white will not want to take on f7 because it will allow black to not dominate the second rank. For example, after this move, bishop takes f7, rook e2, white is up material, but black has more initiative with his control over the second rank. Position is about equal. So let's look at queen d2. Black can probably get a slight edge after white plays this move, but but the positions can get a little difficult to remember due to a number of directions the game can go. The move to remember is not too difficult to see. Knight g4 attacking the dark squared bishop. Uh, players who play the Sicilian will be familiar with this move. If you're not familiar with it, try and remember this idea. So knight takes c6, d takes c6, and here we're going to be looking at three different moves by white. Bishop g5, bishop f4, and queen takes d8. So let's start with bishop g5. So when white plays bishop g5, we're going to just play h6 here. The h6 pawn is defended by our g4 knight. And uh, bishop f4 is going to be played. If white plays queen takes d8, uh, we can play rook takes d8. And then f4, if white doesn't play f4, uh, white might play bishop takes e7. But this is a mistake because after rook e8, our idea is that after the bishop moves out the way, we can play bishop takes c3, followed by rook takes e4, forking the king and, and the light squared bishop. So bishop e, uh, takes e7 is no good. So f4, uh, bishop f4 is going to be played b5. One of the reasons for this move is so that we can steal the uh, g8 a2 uh, diagonal from white uh, because our next move will be bishop e6. So uh, if bishop e2, well before we look at bishop e2 let's look at uh, bishop e3. Um, that square might not be great for the bishop because after a5 we're in a position to harass the c3 knight and the b3 bishop. So bishop e2 and then uh, bishop e6. We're happy to lose a uh, tempo in exchange for the bishop pair should white decide to play uh, bishop takes g4 here. Slight edge to, to black. So that was a look at uh, queen takes d8. So bishop f4, queen a5, castle short, Rook d8, queen e2, knight e5. Um, this bishop takes c3 move is interesting. Yeah, the, my problem with this move, it seems to complicate things. And if, if white knows what he's doing, um, white can get a pretty complicated position uh, in which he has some chances of, 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 of winning. So... I can show you an example. Uh, B takes c3, queen takes c3, rook a d1, rook takes d1, rook takes d1, b5, 
bishop b3, a5, h3, knight f6, rook d3, queen a1 check, king h2, a4, e5, knight h5, rook d8 check, king h7, bishop takes f7. So this is the kind of position that white can get. Uh, objectively, it's probably equal, but it's it just seems like a difficult position to play for black. So instead of uh, bishop takes c3, I prefer knight e5, bishop b3, and b6 with the idea of playing bishop a6. Uh, black does not have too many problems developing in this position and has a slight advantage. So that was a look at bishop g Five. Let's look at bishop f4. After bishop f4, we can play b5. Again, uh, we're trying to take control of that diagonal. So bishop e2. At some point after this bishop e2 move, we can look to play bishop e6. Uh, here, queen a5, targeting the c3 knight in coordination with the dark square bishop. Uh, this idea restricts the queen a bit. So uh, castle short, rook d8, queen e1, and bishop e6. Again, we're happy to lose the uh, tempo if black should play bishop takes g4. So that was look at uh, bishop f4. Let's look at queen takes d8. So after queen takes d8, we're going to play rook takes d8. F, bishop f4, knight e5, bishop e2. If bishop b3, this is a slight mistake because we can play b5, f3, a5, a3. Well, a3 or a4 in this position. Let's look at a4 first. If a4, then we have b4, knight d1, bishop a6. We can play this out a few moves further to see some ideas. Knight e3, c5, bishop d5, rook ac8, bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5. The b2 pawn is under attack. Castle long. Uh, probably not the best move in this position, but if it does happen, um, we can see how the bishop uh, on d5 is actually not well placed. Uh, for example, Bishop f4, rook he1, c4, g3, bishop takes e3 check, rook takes e3, e6, and the bishop is trapped. A complete advantage to black here. So that was a look at a4. But let's look at a3. So a3, rook d6. Well, going back to this rook d6 move, this is kind of a hard move to spot. Our idea is basically to trade off the light squared bishop because that light squared bishop that white has is pretty annoying in this position. Uh, and after rook d6, king f2, a4, bishop a2, bishop e6, bishop takes e6, rook takes e6, rook hd1, knight c4. And we're forcing a concession from white. If, if a heavy or minor piece has to be tied down to the b2 pawn, and, and, and white cannot move the b pawn because that will leave the c3 knight undefended. So that was a look at uh, bishop b3. Let's look at bishop e2 here. After bishop e2, we can play bishop e6. Black has a slight advantage due to a better knight, bishops, and, and the rook being on the open file. So we looked at queen d2. Let's look at knight takes c6. So after knight takes c6, we can play b takes c6. And castle short here by white. Let's look at queen d2 here. 
Uh, if queen d2, then we're going to play queen c7, castle long, rook b8, uh, taking the semi-open file, f3, d5, e takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop d4, White might also play bishop takes d5 here, but that would be a mistake. C takes d5, queen takes d5. Rook takes b2, and if the king takes, king takes b2, queen takes c3, king c1. Queen takes e3, check. A complete advantage to black due to the bishop pair, the queen being free to roam over key squares, the f8 rook having the potential to come op uh, to open files, semi-open files. White will not last too long in this position. So, bishop d3. This is actually the only move that keeps the game even. All, all other moves give black uh, an advantage. Uh, e5, bishop c5, rook d8. Position is about even. Black does not have many problems. And we'll look towards ideas like bishop e6, a5, and or potential at some point of, of moves like f5. So that was a look at queen d2. Uh, castles uh, by white here is the better move. And then queen c7, trying to prevent uh, white from playing e4. Bishop b3 here. f4 would be a mistake because we can play d5. e takes d5, rook d8. Black will end up with a strong center one way or another if d6. We can play, you know, e takes d6. So bishop d3 instead, and then bishop b7, queen f3, d5, bishop f4, queen b6, bishop b3. Uh, if we want to draw, we can uh, try to repeat moves here with queen c7. Otherwise, we can play d takes e4, bishop takes b6. This move gives black a slight edge after e takes f3 bishop c5 rook f e8 slight advantage to black one way or another black's king side pawn structure is going to be weakened so that was a look at knight takes c6 let's look at f4 this is a losing move uh, knight takes e4 knight takes e4 d5 Knight takes c6, bishop takes c6, and we're going to capture one of those two minor minor pieces. So that's f4. So now let's look at the main move, which is bishop b3. This is the main line. So after bishop b3, we're going to play d5. Now there are other ways of playing here, but in this video we're going to be going over d5. It's a very tactical opening that involves a pawn sacrifice and there's a number of different ways that white can respond here so uh, we'll look at we'll look at a number of moves the main move is e takes d5 if bishop takes d5 we can play knight g4 bishop takes c6 b takes c6 Queen d3, if knight takes c6, we can play bishop takes c3, check, b takes c3, queen c7. White does not have any good moves. If the knight moves, we can take on c3. Uh, we, are also, we are also threatening to ruin white's pawn structure by taking on e3. Complete advantage to black here. So knight takes c6 is no good. Uh, queen d3 here, knight takes e3 f takes e3 to protect the knight queen b6 we have the bishop pair and can put those two pieces on decent squares we can even develop our light squared bishop with tempo bishop a6 for example queen takes b2 is a threat at least a slight advantage to black here but likely more than a slight advantage so that was a look at um, queen takes d5 in this position so let's look at knight takes e6 in this position. 
So when white plays knight takes c6, we're going to play b takes c6, obviously. e takes d5 here. If castle's short, we can play knight takes e4, knight takes e4, d takes e4. Slight advantage to black. In some variations in this line, we, can, we will try to harass the b3 bishop with our pawns by pushing them up the board. So e takes d5, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, c takes d5. Queen takes d5, queen takes d5, bishop takes d5, rook b8, castle uh, short. If rook c1, we can play bishop takes b2, attacking the rook. And here, bishop takes b2 will be played, but obviously rook b1, bishop c3 check, winning the rook. So bishop takes b2. Rook takes b2. Position is about even. If white tries bishop b3, we have ideas of playing bishop f5 to target the c pawn. So instead of uh, bishop c1, um, white should play castle short. And after rook takes b2, position is, is even. Again, if bishop b3, we have ideas of bishop f5. So that was a look at knight takes c6. Let's look at f3, which is not a good move. Uh, knight takes d4 in this position. Bishop takes d4. D takes e4. F takes e4. B6. Castle short. Knight g4. Bishop takes g7. Queen c7. e5. King takes g7, queen d4, queen takes e5, queen takes e5, check, knight takes e5. Black does not have too many problems in this position uh, and, and has a slight edge. So that was f3. So after f3, we take on d4. Uh, let's look at knight takes uh, d5. Let's look at knight takes d5 before we look at the main move, which is e takes d5. So knight takes d5, Let, this leads to a variation where if white deviates from playing uh, the one or two best moves in, in many of these positions, white can get in a lot of trouble. So let's see, uh, knight takes e4, we take the unprotected pawn, and here we'll actually look at um, many different moves. The main move we'll be looking at is, is castle short, but we'll also look at uh, knight takes c6, c3, f3, and queen f3. So knight takes c6, b takes c6, uh, f3. White has to try to complicate the position because all other attempts clearly fail. And actually, so does f3. So c takes uh, d5, uh, f takes e4, bishop takes b2, e takes d5, bishop c3, bishop d2, a bishop g4, which is a nice looking move. c1, bishop takes a1, queen takes a1, queen b6. The white's king is clearly in danger. Complete advantage to black. So that was a look at knight takes c6. Let's look at c3. If c3, bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4, e6, knight b4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, queen takes d4, c takes d4. Clear advantage to black, who will look to play moves like rook d8, a5. Black will uh, try to keep the isolated uh, d pawn from undoubling through moves like d5. Queen f3 is the next move. After queen f3, we can play this knight d2 move, which is strange looking. But the idea is we want the king to capture and lose the right to castle. So king takes d2, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4, c3, bishop g7, king e2. Complete advantage to black with the bishop pair and a safer king. So now we'll look at uh, queen f3. So let's look at castle short. So if castle short, a knight a5, attacking the bishop, 
knight d5, e6, knight dc7, bishop d7, queen d3, bishop takes d5, knight takes b5, queen takes d3, c takes d3, knight takes b3, a takes b3, and uh, knight f6. Uh, this is the strongest line in this uh, 9, knight takes d5 variation. Position is about even. The main move is e takes d5. We'll play knight a5. This is the move to remember, removing the knight from the attack, you know, of the d pawn, and attacking the light squared bishop. Now here, queen f3 is the main move, but we'll also be looking at knight f3, knight de2, castle short, and queen d2. Let's start, let's start with knight f3. We'll just play a6 with the idea of playing b5. It's a common theme in the Sicilian. Castle short. It's a fine move by white on the line. It could lead to would be b5, queen d2, bishop b7, rook a d1, knight takes b3, a takes b3, b4, knight a4, knight takes d5, bishop d4, queen c7. Position is equal. So let's look at queen d2. After queen d2, b5, rook d1, bishop b7, bishop g5, queen c8, creating space for the f8 rook, castle short, rook d8, bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, knight e4, knight takes b3, knight takes f6, check, e takes f6, a takes b3, Rook takes d8. This position is also equal. We should look to play uh, rook f5 or rook h5 in many of the positions that arise in this variation. So that was a look at knight f3. Let's look at knight de2. After knight de2, we can play a6, queen d2, b5, castle long, bishop b7, knight f4, rook c8, king b1, knight c4, knight takes c4, rook takes c4, f3, rook c8. With best play, this game ends with in a draw. So that was knight de2. If castle short, knight takes b3, knight takes b3, b6, knight f4, Knight b7, d6, e takes d6, queen takes d6, knight h5, queen takes d8, rook f takes d8, bishop e3, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, rook dc8, a4. If rook d8, uh, we have knight f4, rook f8, knight takes g2. White has four pawn islands, at least a slight advantage to black here. So a4, rook takes c3. Black's position is fine, position is about equal. So that was a look at castles short. Queen d2 is what we'll look at next. So after queen d2, knight takes b3, knight takes b3, b5, and then castle long. If knight takes b5, we have queen takes d5, queen takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop d4, bishop h6, castle short. Black has a bishop pair, position is about even. If castle long, we have b4, knight a4, Bishop f5, f3, rook c8, knight a c5, h5, h3, h4. White's position is relatively locked down. Black will look to play a5 and start pressuring that side of the board. Clear advantage to, to black. So that was a look at queen d2. The main move here is queen 
F3. This is the the best test that white can give uh, to black in this variation. So after queen F3, we're going to play bishop G4. Uh, we might as well develop with tempo. And here, queen G3, knight takes B3. White slides squared bishop had the potential to be a powerful piece, especially once the B pawn is out of the way. Uh, while there's less potential for our knight uh, of becoming powerful. So we made this exchange. So a takes b3, bishop h5, d6, knight g4, castle short. And actually, let's look at castle long in this position. After castle long, we have queen a5, d takes e7, rook f e8, queen d6, Knight takes e3, f takes e3, bishop takes d1, rook takes d1, bishop e5, queen d7, queen a1 check, king d2, if uh, knight b1, we have rook a d1, d8, c4, bishop f6, king c2, queen a6, knight c3, rook takes e7, and um, here white will play queen h3, a uh, clear advantage to black. So if king d2, we have knight takes b2. Rook b1 here, if uh, queen, b, queen takes b7 is a mistake because rook a c8, queen b4, bishop d6, queen takes d6, queen takes c3, king e2, queen a5. With the idea of bringing the queen to g5 and picking off the um, e7 pawn. Complete advantage to black here. So queen takes b7 is no good, so white will play rook b1 and uh, queen a3. Uh, black will pick off the e7 pawn. Position is about even. So that was a look at the uh, castle long move. So if castle short, we have bishop e5 attacking the queen f4, bishop takes d6, knight db5, knight takes e3, queen takes e3, bishop b4, rook a4. Let's look at two other moves here. Let's look at uh, knight takes a7, a7 and rook takes a7. So if knight takes a7, we have bishop a5, knight a5, queen d2, queen takes d2, bishop takes d2, knight b5, bishop e2, Rook f2, bishop e3, pinning the rook. Black is completely winning. If rook a7, we have rook takes a7, queen takes a7, queen c8. Black has the bishop pair and some momentum. Slight ed edge to black here. So the main move, rook a4, and here, bishop a5. This position is equal and appears to be the best line in the Hyper Accelerator Dragon. We'll look to put our bishop on b6 and after white blocks with the knight, we will probably develop our queen uh, to d6 and bring out the rooks to the open files.